here's the syllabus. Please read through it very carefully. In fact, I'd suggest reading through it more than once very carefully. I'll just hit a few of the highlights. Note that because CS 150 AB and 156 are the same course, you cannot enroll in both. You cannot double dip that way. Um, so if you need both courses, uh, please talk to myself or one of your, or your advisor and we'll figure out a way to have you substitute another course um, that will be more meaningful to your learning. Of course, online courses, no course meetings, information. Uh, my office is located in BE 168. I'll have some office hours that I will announce uh, as I finish up my schedule. Communication policy, a couple things to note here. When you send me an email, I'd suggest doing it through Canvas. That way it'll flag it as coming from Canvas. I, as I said, I get a lot of email. And uh, if you just send me something for your private email account, it may get lost in my inbox. If you send it through Canvas, is more likely. But I also suggest in the subject line, put the word Python at the beginning. And that way it'll also help flag it. Um, I do require you to use business professional English. Do not send an email to me as if you are texting it from your phone and doing shortcuts for words and not using proper punctuation and so forth. To get a job in this industry, you need to be professional. And that includes professional communication. So make sure that you are using proper email etiquette. Here are the course descriptions that the district says I should cover in CS 150AB and CS 156. You'll see a lot of overlap between those, but here then are the course level student learning outcomes that take those all into consideration and boil them down to really four big ideas. And we call these the course level student learning outcomes. So we're gonna write programs that process user input and, and display formatted output. We're gonna write programs that use control structures, conditional and repetitional structures. We're gonna write Python programs that use uh, standard and methods that you define and then we use some special features such as lists, which are, if you've used other languages, that's basically arrays and some object-oriented programming. And at the very end, we'll get into doing some graphical user interface things with TK Enter. Link to our course site. So I have created about 100 videos in YouTube for this course. And here is the link to that channel. So in the checklist, you're going to see links to each of the individual videos that I want you to watch each week. But here's the channel you can get to. Like I said, there's about 100 videos there. They average about 10 minutes each. Links to download the Python software. So go to python.org. We'll use the idle editor. There are the other editors that are, that are available to you if you prefer those. Um, the, the reason I chose idle is A, it's really simple, and B, it can be used on various platforms. It doesn't matter if you're using a Mac or a Windows, uh, it'll be the same on both of those, or even Linux. There will be a final exam, and for that final exam, you will need a webcam if you're going to take it remotely, or you can also opt to do it on campus. I believe that's scheduled for Tuesday, December 13th. There's links to the four programming textbooks we're using. Again, you can just download those through Canvas. Computer lab hours. So, uh, we have the computer lab is up in the TC building on the second floor. The hours are open. We're going to use something called, I call reflective grading. Uh, rather than submitting your assignments to be graded, your projects, you're going to submit a weekly reflection paper that you saw a little bit earlier. And what I found is that is a much more effective way of figuring out where you're at in the course and have, be able to interact with you on helping you learn. I want to change the student focus from grading to learning and mastering the content. Grading is a really poor way of demonstrating your mastery of content because grades are very subjective. I want to interact with you on your learning. And if you, I would suggest if you focus on learning in all of your courses, you will be much more successful. The success rate when I changed from the, the traditional grading method to this reflective method more than doubled in this Python course. And this is the third semester I've done this. There will be learning activities each week. Those are going to be the videos and, and articles in the PDF textbooks that I provided. You'll have projects to do each week, usually about two a week. Some of the projects, and I'll show you this in the schedule, are step by step. You watch my video and I want you to code with me. Those generally tend to be a little more harder projects. Then there's other projects where I give you the content and say, now create this project. And for each of those, in this reflective learning process, I've also provided you my code as the second part of those videos or as a subsequent video where if you get stuck, you can go through and look at my code and follow along. Again, the focus is on learning. It's not on performance in this class. 
you can learn any way you like. And I think learning from your instructor or kind of is kind of the apprenticeship model where you're looking over my shoulder. But I want you to first try on most of these projects, try it yourself. That's the only way you learn. And I would say spend a couple hours on a project. And then if you can't get it, then look at my solution. There'll be reflection due each Sunday at midnight. More than two of those being late or missing will disqualify you for an A. More than three will disqualify you for a B. And more than four will be justification for withdrawal from the course. Deadlines are extremely important in the software development industry. It's okay to submit a reflection and say, I really struggled. I didn't get this project to work. That's okay. Let's talk about maybe what, what your struggle was. What, what was the disconnect for you? And then I can come alongside and help you learn. As I said, there's a final exam. The final exam must be taken to get an A or B in the course. It will be uh, proctored, either online or in person. And then to get an A in the course, you have to create a final project. So how do you get a final grade then if you're not submitting assignments for grades? Well, at the end, you're gonna, I'm gonna have a worksheet for you to work through and have you tell me what you think your grade should be. Now, you're requesting a grade. And if I disagree with that, and in most cases I don't, um, we'll have a dialogue and we'll talk about where you're at. And I might even have you show me some of your stuff and walk me through your code. So make sure on your projects, even though you may not be submitting them, make sure you save all of your projects. I may occasionally ask to see those. So in the old way, I had these different uh, CSLOs that we looked at and target points for each of those, and that's how I determined your grade. So I'm gonna give you a spreadsheet that still maintains that, and you'll see a rubric on each of the projects. But again, I'm not using that for grading. I'm making those available to you just for your own self-assessment. So I'll make the grade sheet available to you. It's interactive. All you do is highlight what you think, how you would have scored on each assignment. If you have a disability, there's a link here to the Disability Resource Services. There's also more information in Module 0 of Canvas. This is an online course. However, time management becomes really important. So I designed my courses for the federal standard of uh, 500 minutes per week for a three credit course with the lab. That's that's about eight hours a week. Now we're taking this a little bit faster at 14 weeks rather than 16. So I would say you should budget about nine hours a week for this Python course. Most importantly, before noon of Thursday, September 8th, you must complete the entrance survey. That's my way of demonstrating that you came to class the first week. If you do not do that, I am required to drop you as a no-show. Mentioned the, the cheat sheet available in Canvas. I would also recommend you keep a notebook for the course. And that notebook or any printed materials may be used on the final exam, including that printed cheat sheet. You will not be able to use a computer uh, to look things up or to type in Python code on the final exam, but you can use your notebooks or your notes um, as long as they are printed. No digital uh, copies will be allowed. Everybody codes differently. There's not a wrong answer or a right answer. The, pro the question is, did your program work? That's the bottom line. So everybody codes differently. And code then is like a fingerprint. No two people will do the project the exact same way. I will give you my solution. Your solution might be a little bit different. So you might, even though you get it to work, you might want to look at my solution, see how I did things differently, maybe a little bit more efficiently. So again, this is about learning. I encourage you to learn together. You're welcome to work together on these projects and learn from each other. Maybe you have a sibling or a parent who knows programming really well. They're welcome to help you. Academic misconduct. I've had a lot of problems in the past with people purchasing code from various websites. Uh, there are actually websites out there will, that will you can pay to have people do your Python assignments for you. It's kind of crazy to pay somebody to do a project for you when there's no points associated for it and it doesn't affect your grade. However, that said, um, any type of misconduct will be dealt with harshly and that includes cheating and plagiarism. But again, you can work together on projects. Uh, but if you misrepresent yourself on those work on those reflection worksheets, that is cheating. And so if you're saying, yeah, I did all these projects and they all worked great and you never really did them, um, then you're going to fail the course and maybe even worse. 
So probation, suspension, or expulsion from all Maricopa Community Colleges is on the table. The bottom line, if you're cheating, you're not learning. I'd rather have you say to me, you know, I'm really struggling. I'm not, I'm not getting this. Let's talk about that and work through that. Same thing. All these materials are copyrighted by me for the most part. Please do not distribute them to other websites or to other people outside of this course. I've had problems in the past with people publishing some of my intellectual property on websites, and they have ended up being put on probation from all Maricopa Community Colleges. Please do not do that. I work very hard to create a very unique course for you as a student at South Mountain that I think gives you a step up on courses offered elsewhere. And some other things uh, in terms that you should be aware of in terms of your rights and responsibilities. Again, make sure you retain all your coursework until you receive the final grade. Um, and know the computer usage policies for the campus if you're working in the lab. Let's take a look at the schedule. So here's our course schedule. Each week for the 14, actually 15 weeks with the final exam week, the topics we'll cover, actually over here, on, I'll start on the left. You see the, the days and the dates for each week. We, we usually begin on a Monday and end on a Sunday the first week uh, because of Labor Day. We're starting on a Tuesday. Make sure that you, again, you do that entrance survey before uh, Thursday, September 8th. The week number, the topics we'll cover. Here are roughly the videos that you will watch that I've created in YouTube and they're referenced by numbers and letters. These may change as I create more videos or change some of the videos. Then here are the four textbooks. Most of you are gonna work out of the Halterman textbook. But then here's the corresponding information in Van Rossum, Goal Kicker, and Heinhold. And then here's the assignments. Now one thing I wanna point out in the assignments You'll see some assignments in blue with a little asterisk. Those are step-by-step -step video walkthroughs. I expect you on each of those assignments not to attempt those yourself, but to follow along with my video and recreate those. You won't learn if you just watch the videos, you're gonna learn by actually stopping, pausing, and creating the project yourself. The other ones, and you see they're numbered here, uh, one through uh, 30. The other ones, I want you to try those on your own. And then if you struggle, then watch my solution either at the end of the video or in a subsequent video. And that's called a code review. It's something that's used in industry all the time. Uh, as you become a programmer, you will have to occasionally present your code line by line and explain it to uh, your superior, to a vendor or a client, or to your teammates. I may have you do some code reviews of your projects with me uh, in a Zoom session. But you'll see how I do it in my videos. Each week there's usually two to three assignments. Um, week six, you get a little bit of light week, you have one assignment or one project, and then the final exam and an exit survey. There's also a formative evaluation we'll do week five. This is to give me some feedback on how you think the course is going. So each week you'll do a, a self-assessment and make sure you put your name on it. And then here are the topics we covered that week. How, do you, how did you do? So Dr. Cyan Proctor is one of our faculty members who just went to space last year as the pilot for a SpaceX rocket ship. She was in space for I think four days. And so tying off onto that, how did you do? Is it all systems go? You did really well. Yeah, I had some struggles, trajectory off target, but you finally got it going, finally made, made sense to you. Houston, we have a problem, I'm really struggling with it. Or you crashed and burned, I'm just totally lost. Move the X's to whatever column. It's okay to say you're having a problem or you crashed and burned. Just make sure you're putting in the effort though. If you make no effort and you turn this in that um, you crashed and burned because you didn't even do anything that week, then we'll have a discussion. Each of the projects then you do that week, I'm asking some questions about. How did your project work? Here's the sample data. Did you get the output that was anticipated? So this is called testing and debugging, and it's a very essential part of being a programmer. You've got to test and debug, and debugging is making your programs work by making corrections. It's extremely important you do that, and you make the effort, when, if it doesn't work, to go back and change it and try to get it to work. So in each of these, you're simply gonna say yes or no that you got that output given that input that was provided. Now here's the most important thing. I want a self-reflection paragraph at least a paragraph on how did the week go for you? What are you struggling with? What did you get? What did you learn? What was really valuable to you 
And that's what I would dialogue with you on is your self-reflection, probably more so than the yes, no, and the crash and burn uh, categories. But I want to be able to ref- I want to be able to answer your questions and talk about how you're learning. If you do not do this self-reflection, that is the same as a late or missing assignment. And again, more than two of those, you do not get an A. More than three, you do not get a B. More than four, you're withdrawn from the course. So make sure you add a little paragraph here, um, in at least four or five sentences of how the week went for you. At the end of the course, we'll have the descriptive grading process. You'll go through and you'll grade yourself on the 30 topics that we will cover in this course, A, B, C, or D, and then use that as a guide to think, where would I fall into this course, A, B, C, or D? Or you can get a W if you like, you just didn't get it and you need to withdraw. Um, if, you're, if you are a veteran and can't withdraw, then I will offer you a D. D, you're going to, have to retake the course anyway. Uh, the only, generally, the only reason I give Fs is if there is academic misconduct. So you're going to choose then what grade do you think you should get, A, B, or C. And remember, for an A or B, you've got to pass the final exam. And for an A, you must do that final project. And so you will simply highlight which one of these letter grades you think you deserve. Make sure then there's a, there's a second half of this. Give me your final exam score. Give me your rationale why you think you deserve that grade and any other course comments that also must be completed. My biggest thing I would say is have fun as you're learning. This is really valuable content. Programming is useful in every industry and looks good on every single resume. It's a great opportunity to learn logic and problem solving. I invite you to check out my Python playlist of videos. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.